हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर प्रदीप बेहरे साइंटिस्ट डेयरी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी डिवीजन नेशनल डेयरी रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट करनाल टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हाई फाइबर फूड्स अंडर द पेपर एडवांसेस इन फूड साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी नाउ लेट अस कम टू द इंट्रोडक्शन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ फूड प्रोडक्ट्स कंफर्मिंग टू द कंज्यूमर नीड्स इज the biggest challenge for process the food industries now we know that modern consumers are interested uh, or they are more conscious about their health now they want to eat the healthy foods at the same time they also want the the food should be tasty attractive safe for consumption and naturally it should be a healthy the functional foods have become an important and a uh, rapidly expanding segment of the food market lot of uh, manufacturers are now coming into the uh, picture they are trying to sell this kind of foods because they have direct role on the human health foods are added with the nutrients such as vitamins and minerals that make you health effect now the fiber once known as a waste material now has got a lot of uh, attraction and received the important position and is being considered as one of the vital nutrients dietary fiber is a group of food components which is a resistant to hydrolysis by human digestive enzymes and necessary for promoting good health this means these are not uh, utilized or metabolized by our human system but these are utilized by special or beneficial organisms which subsequently can give health benefit it also promote uh, any beneficial physiological effects including relaxation and blood cholesterol attenuation as well as blood glucose attenuation dear friends now we come to the learning objective of this module to study the dietary fibers to study the role of dietary fibers in human health to study the development of dietary fibers containing dairy and non dairy foods so coming to the classification of dietary fibers dietary fibers are classified into two groups by means of its solubility in water as a soluble and insoluble dietary fiber let us first of all talk about the their sources cereal so sources provide a major part of the insoluble dietary fiber whereas fruits vegetables oats plant gums legumes soybeans uh, xylem husk mucilages seaweed and mineral polysaccharides are important sources of soluble dietary fiber among <coughs> the insoluble water insoluble uh, fibers there are a major fiber component which include cellulose hemicellulose and lignin So let us describe one by one cellulose the it is the main structural component of the plant cell wall which is insoluble in concentrated alkali soluble in concentrated acid and its sources includes a plants mainly vegetables sugar beet and various plants in the second fiber component that is hemicellulose it is a cell wall polysaccharides which contain a backbone of beta 1 4 glucosidic linkages which is soluble in dilute alkali and the major source include cereal grains uh, another component uh, which is important that is lignin it's a non carbohydrate cell wall com- component it's a complex cross linked phenyl propane polymer which resists the bacterial degradation and it is mainly obtained from the woody plant in the water soluble type of fiber so there are uh, mainly three uh, type of fibers which are in water soluble and first one is the pectin which is a components of primary cell wall uh, with a d galactoronic acid as a principal components generally water soluble and gel forming the major sources include fruits vegetables legumes sugar beet and the potato second one is the gums these are secreted at the site of plant injury by specialized secretory cells food and pharmaceutical use and its source is uh, leguminous seed plants 
gaur, locust, locust pins, seaweed extract, carrageenan, alginates, and microbial gums like xanthan and gelan. So we also know that the xanthan and gelan are generally used as a stabilizer to improve the physicochemical properties of the food product, especially in the dairy products. Then the third one is the mucilages. It is synthesized by the plant, prevalent desiccation of seed endosperm, food endos to use, hydrophilic is a stabilizer. So and its sources include the plant extract, gum acacia, gum caraya, and gum tragonal. The effectiveness of the fiber is gone by the physical properties such as the particle size when ingested, water holding capacity, solubility, and viscosity in aqueous phase. Affinity to bile acid salts, cationic binding, exchange effect, fermentability in the bowel, and chemical identity and the proportion of the various constituents. The dietary fiber undergoes a very little changes during the processing of foods except its size reduction. Now friends, let us come towards the very important topic, the role of dietary fibers. Dietary fibers contribute positively towards the health quality of life of the consumer. There are many number of dietary fibers are available and which are excellent source of minerals like iron, copper, zinc, chromium and magnesium. They are also important because they can be useful to uh, tackle uh, nutritional deficiencies because many of the times many uh, people they are suffering with the nutritional deficiencies and taking these lipid fibers can give them a very boost up uh, by improving their uh, nutritional content. Now the soluble fibers we can say that they have a different role on the human system and this varies from fibers to fibers. The soluble fibers especially they are known for their hypocholesterolemic effect that means if we take the soluble fibers they can reduce the cholesterol level whereas the insoluble fibers it is known for the reduction of colon cancer it means uh, as this name suggests it is the insoluble fibers which cannot be utilized by our body but it supports the growth of certain best beneficial bacteria which ultimately results into uh, control of certain carcinogenic uh, uh, compounds and is as a it leads to prevention of colon cancer the physiological effects of dietary fibers makes it of interest to the consumer food nutritionist and the regulators so now coming to the effect of dietary fiber on the human health the beneficial effect of dietary fiber includes its role in preventing health disorders like constipation, obesity, and some diseases like hemorrhoids, cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, diabetes, and cancer. Dietary fiber escapes digestion in the small intestine and passes into the colon, while certain dietary fibers undergo hydrolysis and fermentation by colonic bacteria. There are various dietary fiber which the human body cannot utilize but these dietary fibers are useful for the friendly bacteria which then subsequently utilizes this fiber and gives the various kind of health benefit. The fiber which is <coughs> uh, not utilized by the human being but ut utilized by the bacteria are mainly uh, the, the fiber which is undigested uh, or unutilized by the bacteria are coming out with the fishes. The dietary fibers undergoing bacterial degradation include polysaccharides such as resistant starch, pectin, enoline, gorgum, and oligosaccharides. In contrast, the structural polysaccharides such as cellulose and lignin, which are usually a component of the complex fiber structure are insoluble in water and not or hardly degraded by the intestinal bacteria during their passage through the colon. Wheat bran for instance belongs to the latter category because it is composed of a 
mixture of complex polysaccharide combined in a supramolecular structure. In general, both fermentable and non-fermentable fibers have a bulking effect which results in increased fecal output. In case of non-fermentable fiber, the extent of bulking depends on the inherent mass or water holding capacity. In contrast, the fermentable fibers results in an increase of the bacterial biomass which leads to an increase in the stool fecal output, so which we can consider as a positive effect on the human health. The fiber containing uh, food provides some protection against colon and rectal cancer. It was suggested that the adult fiber consumption should be increased to 20 to 30 gram daily which may help to reduce the risk of these cancers. A per capita daily intake of 30 gram of dietary fiber or 12 gram of dietary fiber per 1000 kilocalorie per day is considered desirable to be obtained from as varied sources as possible with about one third being soluble fiber. Now just we have talked about the health uh, benefit of the dietary fiber as a supportive agent for the macroorganism. Now dietary fibers as a prebiotic. As we know that prebiotic is defined as a non-digestible food ingredients that beneficially affect the host by selectively stimulating the growth and or activity of one or limited number of bacteria in the column. That means that dietary fibers especially those are non-digestible but which support the growth of beneficial bacteria for like uh, bifidobacterium which uh, then gives the positive effect or which stimulate the positive response from the human system. The concept of concepts of probiotics arose from the observation that inulin and fructooligosaccharides selectively stimulate the growth of bifidobacteria. Although most research has been done on inulin and fructooligosaccharides, other non-digestible oligosaccharides including xyloligosaccharides, galactooligosaccharides and isomaltooligosaccharides have also been tested for their prebiotic effect. There are several prebiotic uh, uh, dietary fibers are available in the market and many more are considered as a candidate prebiotic that means they are yet to be called as a prebiotic but in the coming days or near future they can be uh, given the prebiotic status those which have a different composition which may include 1,4 or beta 1 2 linkages or different types of structure. The majority of the candidate probiotics are oligosaccharide but also include polysaccharide. To serve as a bacterial substrate in the colon, a prebiotic may not be hydrolyzed or absorbed in the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract. Dietary carbohydrates that escape digestion in the small intestine undergo bacterial fermentation in the colon. This process affects the microbial ecology of the gastrointestinal tract and influences gut metabolism and function. Probiotics are non-digestible but fermentable oligosaccharides that are specifically designed to change the composition and activity of the intestinal microbiota with the prospect to promote the health of the host. Dietary fiber and non-digestible oligosaccharides are the main growth substrate of gut microorganism. Their fermentation results in the acidification of the colon contents and the formation of short chain fatty acid which serve as fuels in different tissues and may play a role in regulation of cellular processes. So now let us uh, talk about the interaction between food ingredients and the colonic microflora. So there are various food ingredients which positively or negatively affect the colonic microflora. Colonic microflora means the microorganisms which are present in the colon. So these are typically consist of positive microorganisms and negative that means good bacteria and the bad bacteria. In the gut fermentation there are number of molecules which are present polyphenols for example flavonoids, phenolic acids and lignans. 
in carbohydrate there are number of molecules like dietary fibers oligosaccharides probiotics lactic acid bacteria and bifida bacteria as we know that probiotics these are the group of organisms which when given to the human beings that gives the positive health benefit health benefit means like uh, anti cancerous effect so cure the problem of lactose intolerance and there are many many uh, problems which are associated with the gastrointestinal tract are cured by the use of probiotics then the metabolites of the phenolics that is a, a glycino a glycoso glycones hydroxyphenolic acid hydroxyphenolic acetic acid hyporic acids then the metabolites of the carbohydrate that is short chain fatty acids gases other metabolites changes in the macrophora like macrophora activity composition of macrophora so this in terms that how these various uh, bigger molecules are converted into the smaller ones that means the uh, metabolites of the polyphenols the metabolites of the carbohydrates the metabolites of the action activity of the probiotic organisms then there are some effect of this that is physiological effects which includes the local effect or systemic effect that means ultimately the aim or the the outcome of this interaction is the positive effect on the human health that means it can modulate immune we can say the immune modulation it can modify or stimulate the immune system of the human so coming to the dietary fiber requirements the how much quantity of dietary fiber is required for a human being even we can consider uh, different age groups for uh, adults old aged or elderly people we can say so the dietary fiber rds for healthy adults are 38 g per day for males which ranging from 90 to 50 years and 25 g per day for females which ranges from 90 to 50 years old so that means that there is a lesser requirement for the females uh, for the for dietary fibers the rds for the fiber decreases with the age male age 51 years and older need 30 g per day female age 51 years and older need 21 mg per day the requirement for fibers varies somewhat among the individuals there are no tolerable up, upper intake levels for the fiber because fiber is a bulky excess eating is thought to be self limiting because we do not want to eat highly bulk food so there is no question of uh, any uh, adverse effect of the fiber at very high intakes uh, if somebody takes fiber can combine with the certain vitamins and minerals to make them unavailable to the body in a chemical process called chelation so that means it will have some interaction with the vitamins and minerals which uh, subsequently may not come into the uh, may not do the its desirable effect in the human body however eating a balanced diet the chelating effect is not great enough to cause nutrient deficiencies even vegetarians whose diets are very high in fiber have normal vitamin and mineral levels fibers do carry water out of the body which could be dehydrating it is important to drink extra fruits to help fiber work the short term effect of a low fiber diet is usually a constipation so that means if you take the lower amount of fiber that leads to a constipation high fiber diet prevents constipation and hemorrhoids it stimulates the muscles of the digestive tract to retain their tone over the long term a low fiber diet may increase the risk of heart diseases strokes diabetes and gastrointestinal conditions when increasing fiber intake it is best to do it gradually over several weeks to prevent stomach aches bloating gas and diarrhea regular physical exercise and higher fiber intake were associated with the reduced risk of constipation even after controlling for numerous factors women who are physically active 
daily and had approximately 20 gram of dietary fiber uh, daily had a threefold lower prevalence of constipation compared with the women who rarely exercised and had about 7 gram of fiber daily so now coming to the fiber interest foods that means now people are trying to incorporate fiber as there are various uh, health benefits or we can say positive effects not only in the food but also on the human health there are uh, growing concern of using the dietary fibers in the food fibers in the foods can change their consistency texture neurological behavior and sensory characteristics of the end product dietary fiber holds all the characteristics required to be considered as an important ingredient in the formulation of functional food due to its beneficial health effects among food enriched in fiber the most known and consumed are the breakfast cereals and bakery products dietary fibers as i have told it has have re, uh, textural rheological and sensorial effect on the uh, food product it has been now tried to improve the viscosity body and texture sensorial attributes like flavor and uh, color and appearance by using the high fiber uh, content now people has tried to prepare functional bread and biscuit in this the value of the bread and biscuits have been tried to improve wheat flour supplemented with uh, fenugreek uh, fiber improved the functional quality of the dough used for the bread making a traditionally biscuit was converted to a functional food by the addition of vitamin b12 folic acid vitamin c and prebiotic fiber while reducing salt and sugar one of the author suggested that 15% of the orange peel and pulp could be incorporated as an ingredient in making biscuits as they are a suitable source of dietary fiber with associated bioactive compound in addition uh, the traditional uh, biscuit was lacking in some of the vital compounds which were which has been tried to improve upon so now the people have tried to prepare cakes also by using uh, various types of uh, dietary fibers cakes prepared from 25% apple pomace and wheat flour blend had high acceptable quality addition of apple pomace also avoids the use of any other flavoring ingredients as it had already a pleasant fruity flavor so that means use of pomace have uh, very good uh, effect on in incorporating cakes which also do not require any additional flavoring agent or additives pineapple cores showed a potential to be a good source of dietary fiber and cellulose which can be used as a functional ingredient for bakery and meat products depending on its type and particle size for example a large size 100 to 170 mesh was found to be more suitable for oil reduction of cake duff net and increased cake volume while small size uh, 170 mesh was more suitable for reducing shrinkage and improving a texture of beef burgers high fiber toast bread made from white flour equal proportion of coarse and fine bran at 20% wheat germ at 7.5% plus sodium sterile to lactylate at 0.5% level was found to possess sofier texture and improved sensorial quality than the whole wheat flour bread people have tried to incorporate fiber and mineral so in fiber and mineral enriched pan bread with excellent quality can be prepared by replacing the wheat flour with defatted rice bran up to 5% level without affecting the internal and external characteristics of the bread so now uh, let us talk about the fiber containing dairy 
products and beverages. These fibers have been tried to incorporate in various dairy or non-dairy foods. In ice cream and yogurt, we generally add the fiber ingredients such as alginates, gall gums and cellulose, cellular gels to provide viscosity, improve emulsion, foam freeze, thaw, freeze or thaw stability, control melting properties, reduce senescence, promotes formation of smaller ice crystals and facilitate extrusion. So that means it, when we add the fiber, it gives the textural benefit. There are some other examples like gorgum, pectins and enolin. They are also uh, added in other pro product like cheese. Uh, as it uh, decreases its fat content without losing its organoleptic characteristics. These are generally the polysaccharides which not only gives the uh, textural properties but also uh, helps in reduction of addition of addi additives. In case of beverages and drinks, the addition of dietary fiber increases their viscosity and stability. Since they form a gelling agent, they can improve the uh, consistency of the product. So there are number of fiber which have been tried in milk and other products. What fiber can be incorporated into the milkshakes, instant type breakfast drinks, fruits and vegetables, juice, iced tea, sports, drinks and wine. There are other uh, dairy products like fermented milk products for example like dahi, yogurt, lassi. They have been also tried to incorporate uh, with the fiber material. In fermented milk, uh, people have used citrus fiber for uh, of particularly orange and lemon and which has been found to give very good acceptability. In another uh, way, yogurt fortified with a 3% dead fiber resulted with a similar acceptability as the controlled yogurt. So there is always concern when we try to fortify certain things, it should match with the uh, sensorial or organoleptical properties of the natural product. So it means that even we increase the dietary fiber up to a certain extent, it will give the taste of a natural product. As both the fiber and yogurt are well known for their beneficial health effects, together will constitute a functional foods with commercial applications. So coming to the next topic, the fiber containing milk products. Dietary fibers have also been used to improve the quality of meat product. Dietary fiber based on pectins, cellulose, soya, wheat, maize or rice isolates and beet fiber can be used for improving the texture of meat products such as sauces, salami and at the same time are adequate to prepare low fat products such as dietetic hamburgers. Also, they have the ability to in, uh, of increasing the water retention capacity. People have used these in, uh, uh, dietary fibers in the meat matrix which contributes to maintain its juiciness which is desirable in the meat. In the production of synthetic meats, especially meat analogs from the plant protein, addition of xylem requires uh, aids in modifying the texture to impart a meat-like chewiness. What brand or what fiber appears to be most suitable fat replacement in the ground beef and pork? Pork sauces products due to its ability to retain water and emulate particle definition in ground meat in terms of both color and texture. That means, so people have uh, used what brand just to improve the texture of the meat and the improve the color of the meat. In an attempt to develop low salt, low fat and high fiber functional chicken nuggets, uh, people have tried to incorporate different fibers like pea, hull flour, gram hull flour, flour apple pulp and bottle guard in different combination at, uh, at different level. So, the, this has shown that when we use 10% level, it gives a better quality to the meat. So dear students, so far you have got the idea about the 
these modules now let us come towards the conclusion of this module many of these isolated dietary fiber ingredients have certain properties which directly influence the development of food products to impact their production eating quality and shelf stability use of these dietary fibers also affect the keeping quality of the foods many of the time it has been found that dietary fiber do not reduce the shelf life of the food second point is that the emphasis on the physiological properties of a fiber has many more advantages particularly for the low viscosity fibers that do not bind substantial amounts of water and can be used at the physiological levels in food products for example inulin partially hydrolyzed gorgum polydextrose and resistant maltodextrin by using a third point the increasing the number of new fibers for food texture and functional food user also creates a new research opportunities in both nutrition and food sciences so there is lot of concern about consuming the dietary fibers nowadays people are more concerned and they are they want this kind of dietary fiber should be incorporated into their food so that they can be enriched with the uh, health effect and also the nutritional values of the food products uh, can be improved thank you